silence your mobile devices. Thank you. Welcome to the Idaho State University Presidential Investiture of Kevin Satterley. Please rise for the processional.
Will the audience please remain standing for the singing of the national anthem by the Formatas. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare Good morning. Please be seated. My name is Lynn Reddington. I have the honor of serving as Idaho State University's Vice President for Student Affairs. On behalf of the students, faculty, staff, and administration of Idaho State University, welcome and thank you for joining us as we formally welcome our 13th President. First, please join me in thanking the Formatas again. Thank you. Acknowledging native lands is an important way to honor and respect indigenous peoples and their traditional territories. Today, I want to honor and acknowledge that the land on which Idaho State University sits is within the original Fort Hall Indian Reservation boundaries and home of the Shoshone and Bannock peoples. Now we will recognize our platform guests. As I announce the names of our, of our guests, they will stand and remain standing. Please hold your applause until all of the platform party have been introduced. Staff Council President, Julie Van Leuven. Athletic Director, Pauline Theros. Vice President for University Advancement, Dr. Kent Tingey. Interim Vice President for Research, Dr. Scott Snyder. Vice President for Finance and Business Affairs, Dr. Glenn Nelson. Vice President for Health Sciences, Dr. Rex Force. Mayor of Pocatello, Brian Blad. Mayor of Chubbuck, Kevin England. Mayor of Idaho Falls, Rebecca Casper. President of the Idaho State University Foundation, Dave Jepson. President of the Idaho State University Alumni Association, Colonel Paul Briggs. Director of the Idaho National Laboratory, the presenting sponsor of today's ceremony, Dr. Mark Peters. Executive Vice President and Provost, Dr. Laura Woodworth Nye. Executive Director of the State Board of Education, Matt Freeman. State Board of Education member, Emma Atchley. State Board of Education member, Richard Westerberg. State Board of Education immediate past president, Dr. Linda Clark. Co-chair of Idaho State University Faculty Senate, Laura Ahola Young. Co-chair of Idaho State University Faculty Senate, Dr. Hussein Musavinajad. Chairman of the Fort Hall Business Council, Nathan Small. Faculty speaker, Dr. Karen Appleby. 
President of the Associated Students of Idaho State University, Logan Schmidt, Lieutenant Governor of the State of Idaho, Janice McGeehan, and Governor of the State of Idaho, Brad Little, and the 13th President of Idaho State University, Kevin Satterley. Thank you. You all may sit down. On behalf of our campus community and the Bengal family, thank you to each of our special guests for joining us for this memorable occasion. And a special welcome and a thank you for sharing him to Kevin's family. It's over here. I would also like to pay tribute to our university presidents and delegates from other universities that have traveled to be with us here today. Our delegates include, representing the Shoshone Bannock tribes, Nathaniel Lawley, University of Georgia, Dr. Gary K. Birch, Brigham Young University, Idaho, Van Chrisman, University of Northern Colorado, President Andy Feinstein, Northwest Nazarene University, President Joel K. Pearsall, Boise State University, Dr. Leslie Webb, College of Southern Idaho, Dr. Jonathan Lord, College of Eastern Idaho, President Rick Amen. Allow me to also recognize the sponsors of this inauguration celebration week. Through these sponsorships and the support of all those that attended our inauguration fundraising event last night, we raised $106,850 in scholarships for first-generation Idaho students. Our partner sponsors include the Idaho College of Osteopathic Medicine, the Pocatello Chubbuck Chamber of Commerce Foundation, Ed Snell's Pharmacy, Bayer, ISU Credit Union, U.S. Bank, Direct Communications, Cole Chevrolet, Idaho State Journal, Bill and Karen Eames, and Simplot. Our benefactor level sponsors include Bingham Memorial Hospital, Mountain View Hospital, Transcendental, Affinity Partnerships, Blue Cross of Idaho, Portneuf Medical Center, Idaho Central Credit Union, Holly Troxel, the Belukov family, and Premier Technology. And now I would like to especially recognize our partner, the Idaho National Laboratory, who is the presenting sponsor of this event today. The Idaho National Lab and ISU have had an exceptional long-time affiliation. Our deep-rooted relationship with the INL has provided our university with an opportunity to engage in collaborative efforts and research. As one of ISU's premier partners, the Idaho National Laboratory has facilitated joint faculty and instructor appointments, provided millions in scholarship assistance, collaborated with our campus on research projects, enhanced community outreach efforts, and substantially supported our mission of educating students. Thank you, INL, for your more than six decades of generous support of Idaho State University. Thank you, and now it is my distinct pleasure to introduce the chairman of the Fort Hall Business Council, Nathan Small. It's on base. Good morning. On behalf of the Shishon Bannock tribes, I'd like to uh, have the privilege uh, of introducing our tribal drummer, drummers to give an honor song for Kevin. This honor song is intended to recognize and honor Kevin in his new position and to honor our friendship. When he came out to the uh, reservation there and we signed an MOU with him, he was given a, a wrist, uh, beaded wrist uh, bracelet. 
And I showed him mine, and I told him the next time we meet, and every time we meet, we, we must wrist bump. <laughs> and this morning when I met him, he was wearing it, and we wrist bumped. <laughs> so. I'd like to, uh, this honor song isn't just sung for any, anybody, and it, is just, it isn't sung at any time. It's, it's a, an honor song, and a lot of times we, uh, when our veterans come back from uh, serving or when they retire from the military, this song is sang for them, so, and it's also sang for other people who have risen in the world to a point of where they have some distinction about them. And so this song is an honor song that is also sung. So it's a great pleasure to have uh, our singers and our group here to sing. I'd like to introduce LeGrand Kobe and, and his singers from the reservation here. Thank you for that amazing performance. And now I would like to welcome a very honored guest, Governor Brad Little. On behalf of the state of Idaho, I welcome you in this historic and exciting moment as we celebrate Kevin Satterley becoming the 13th president of Idaho State University. Today, President Satterley's investiture is also a recognition of Kevin as the most senior president of Idaho's four-year institutions. 
the Alpha and the Omega. I could not be happier. Kevin brings both an experienced and a new look into how we need to invigorate higher education in Idaho. I've known of Kevin for years during his time at Boise State and why he served as a Deputy Attorney General. Kevin has perhaps been to more state board meetings than anyone, and he should get a medal just for that alone. <laughs> Kevin is a connector, a listener, a leader, and a servant. I've become much better acquainted with Kevin and Margaret since they've been here on campus. Football games, President's Council meetings, legislative functions, other ISU events, both here and at the Meridian campus. We all can sense the excitement and anticipation of what he has already done and what he will get done. Whether it's the excitement at a Bengal game or tedious, deep policy on the future of education. I had mine nummy, but I took that out. <laughs> President Satterley will serve Bengal Nation, Bengal Nation and Idaho well. Idaho State University has built a strong reputation not only for its high quality education and training programs for students, but also as a linchpin for research solutions that support Idaho's entire economy. And as we were waiting outside, he was downloading on the most recent things he's done. Kevin's natural ability to lead will only intensify the strong reputation you all have built for ISU. I know we all share my goal of making Idaho a place where our children and grandchildren want to stay and for the ones who have left to come back. Idaho State University and all of Idaho's institutions of higher learning are a fundamental factor in achieving that goal. Kevin, I'm confident in you and we're all proud of you. We're all excited about what you will accomplish in Idaho during your tenure. Congratulations on this memorable day. Governor Little, thank you so much for your comments and your support for the university. With dedicated public officials such as you, Idaho's education system has a bright future. Allow me to introduce Dr. Karen Appleby from the College of Education to present remarks on behalf of the university faculty. Thank you, Dr. Reddington. I'm honored and proud to stand before you today to celebrate the investiture of President Kevin Satterley. Today is an exciting and special day to be a Bengal. Today, we have the opportunity to officially welcome a new era of leadership and to honor our past and reflect on why we chose to become Bengals in the first place. Throughout the year, President Satterley has encouraged us to reflect on our why. Why are we all here today? Why is it so important to clarify our collective purpose and vision? Why is it so crucial for us to live out that mission on a daily basis? For all of us here, and especially as a faculty member, it is easy to define our why. Our why, quite simply, is our students. At its most fundamental level, teaching is, of course, about student learning. Learning matters. What our students learn and do in the classroom will help them become exceptional mathematicians, physical therapists, teachers, musicians, accountants, and law enforcement professionals. Our why, however, is often better revealed to us as we watch our students defend their final projects, take their last tests, turn in their final papers, and proudly walk across the stage at graduation, signifying to the world they are here, they are ready, and they are well prepared. It is often in those final moments we have with our students when we realize the privilege it is to teach a new and upcoming generation of highly skilled professionals. 
It is in these moments that we realize our why is not just what our students learn, but who our students have and will become. My two most important teaching goals are and always have been to provide, to provide my students with compelling and authentic opportunities to identify their professional aspirations and to guide and mentor them as they travel their academic journeys from engaged students to competent professionals to loyal ISU alumni. I know I have not been alone in these endeavors because I see firsthand and on a daily basis how my faculty colleagues at ISU have served their students in a similarly dedicated manner. On his day of investiture, I would like to thank President Satterley for giving us the opportunity and encouraging us to take a little bit of time out of our busy schedules to think about our why. In the past 10 months, we have learned that President Satterley's leadership is focused on creating a successful team and a collective vision that supports our biggest and most important why, our students, their journeys, and their bright and exciting futures. Thank you for this opportunity to share my thoughts today. I'm truly excited for the future of ISU under President Satterley's leadership, and I look forward to our continued pursuit of our why, because indeed, our students are why we roar. And now it is my pleasure to introduce the president of the Associated Students of Idaho State University, Logan Schmidt. Thank you, Dr. Appleby. I'm graduating this semester with a degree in accounting. And within another year, I'll be graduating with my master's degree from this university. During the past four years, I have opportunities to do things I never thought were possible. It was all because of this place, Idaho State University. I've had a chance to advocate on behalf of this university to elected officials, travel to Washington, D.C. to present to big four accounting firms, educate future Bengals about why Idaho State should be their home for the next four years, and made friends here who are more than friends. The Bengal family is my family. I have mentors who have shaped me into a person, a better person, and have literally changed the trajectory of my life. I've been in the classroom with faculty members who, in their spare time, text me just to see how I'm doing. Faculty members that have taken it upon themselves to reach out to me when I was struggling personally, to take me to coffee and to make sure I was just doing okay. They kept me going, kept me pursuing my future. I will walk across the commencement stage next week because of them. Next week's commencement might not have been my path if it had not been for my pers persistent mother who said I would, I would go to college. <laughs> I might not have never, I might have never had these opportunities. I might not be looking ahead at a future where I know that I can do anything because of this university. I might not be standing right here in front of the governor, our mayors, this Bengal family, and the president of this great university. I love Idaho State University. I love it because it has changed my life, and I know it is changing the lives of other students. And I believe that this university is in a great place because of a guy I met last May. A guy who doesn't ask me to call him Mr. President or Mr. Satterley, just Kevin. When I first met him, he asked me what opportunities there were for Idaho State. I was very nervous. I responded, you know, Idaho State's, we're doing all right. We just need a little nudge. <laughs> he responded immediately. He said, let's push. Let's push Idaho State so every corner in the state of Idaho is striped in orange and black. In his short time as president, he has done just that. He has created a positive and exciting atmosphere for the ISU community. He truly is letting every inch of Idaho hear our roar. When people ask me about Kevin, I tell them we're lucky. We're very lucky. When I talk to Kevin and tell him what the students are thinking, he really listens. He hears what we have to say, and he really wants to make things better. And he does what he says he's going to do. So when Kevin says 
this state will hear our roar, he means it. Get ready, Idaho. You're about to hear these Bengals roar. Thank you. Now I am very excited that we have the Idaho State Board of Education board members with us today. I have personally seen the university's governing board's dedication to helping Idaho State University grow and thrive. I am honored to introduce Dr. Linda Clark to the podium. Thank you very much. Idaho State University has been served by 12 administrative leaders since its founding in 1901. These individuals have all demonstrated a shared commitment and resolute determination to provide leadership for this fine institution. Today, we formally welcome to this distinguished company, Kevin Satterley, and I invite Kevin to come forward. Kevin Satterley, the State Board of Education has chosen you as the president of Idaho State University. You will have the great privilege and responsibility of leading Idaho State University to the fulfillment of its role and its mission. Established in 1901 as the Academy of Idaho, Idaho State University has emerged as a regional undergraduate university. Kevin Satterley, you fully realize that, like your renowned predecessors, you must have the perseverance to maintain the pioneer spirit in education that is Idaho State's heritage. And now, by virtue of the authority of this Idaho State Board of Education, place is the great seal of Idaho State University, the symbol of the office you now hold. On behalf of the Idaho State Board of Education, I welcome you as president of Idaho State University. I attest our confidence in you and pledge our support as you strive to perpetuate the tradition of excellence that has been Idaho State's hallmark in the past and aspiration for the future. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the 13th president of Idaho State University, Kevin Satterley. Thank you. I am humbled. Humbled and honored. There's almost no other way to describe it, to describe what I'm feeling right now other than humbled and honored. Governor Little, Lieutenant Governor McGeehan, Dr. Clark, Mr. Westberg, Ms. Atchley, from our Board of Trustees, the State Board of Education, to my colleagues, alumni, family and friends, too numerous to mention in the room today, thank you. Thank you so much for coming. And to all of our students, our students everywhere, thank you. And one last point, Governor Little, thank you. Your presence here supporting our campus as we move forward, it means a lot to me, it means a lot to our campus and our entire community. So thank you for being here today. To be standing in front of all of you 
right here on this stage in this amazing facility at this fantastic university, it's incredibly humbling. But it's also a testament to what we do as an institution and more importantly, why we do it. I am standing here before you today as a first generation college graduate and as living proof why what we do matters. In short, why we roar. I often give speeches about leadership and the importance that leadership plays in every level of the university, not at the top, but at every level of the university, and how important that is to moving our university and our mission forward. And one of the leadership tips, one of the concepts that I talk about when I talk about leadership is that for leaders, you can't fake passion. You either do or you do not have passion for our work as a university. Our students are why we are here. Our students come to us to get an education. They come to us to better their lives. They come to us to open up a world for them to experience and learn from. And to be a leader at any level of the university, you have to have passion for our why. You have to have passion for this. This is why we roar. 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 why we roar. This is why we roar. This is why we roar. That is why we roar. You either are or you are not moved by what you just saw. And every single person who works at the university understands we come to work every day to be a part of that, to make that happen, to make that experience happen for our students. We come to work and we get to come to a university to go to work. We get to be a part of that. We get to be part of having that impact on the lives of our students every day. That is why we roar. Next week at commencement, thanks to our faculty, 
we are going to recognize over 2,500 students and bestow upon them, in recognition of their hard work in your classes, certificates, associate degrees, bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, doctorates, and professional credentials that will enable them to go out in the world and achieve their dreams. That's why you roar. And on the way, between their march through the arch on their first day and when they march across stage at commencement, we are going to give them experiences that will stay with them forever. Experiences like just last month when our graduate students and graduate students from across the state presented their master's thesis and doctoral dissertations in the state's first ever three-minute thesis competition. Imagine spending years researching and writing your thesis or your dissertation and then having just three minutes to present your findings <laughs> to a judge. I was so proud of our students and their performance at that competition. Those are the kind of experiences our students are having at Idaho State University. And students come to us for our career path internship program. As many of you know in the audience, this is a fantastic program that provides paid internships for Idaho State University students. So they can go out and not only get practical real world, world experience while they're a student, but they can get paid along the way to help reduce some of the burden of the cost of college. This is a fantastic program. It's a program I talk about wherever I go across the state because not only is it fantastic, but it's one of the things that distinguishes us as a university from other places. Students come here to experience International Night, where they can experience culture from around the world, and it's culture that's provided to them by their peers, by our own international students who provide the programming. Students come here to learn to make the world a better place, like the students from our Sustainability Club, who want to use their education to make a better, more environmentally friendly world for all of our collective futures. And students come here because of our debate team. Now, for those of you who follow our fantastic debate team, you already know this. But for the rest of us, this year, our debate team took their wins to a whole new level. How about national champions? Because it's true, Idaho State University debaters Caden Marchetti and Nate Mortimer, both Pocatello natives, both current political science students, argued their way to the top of the public forum debate in Pi Kappa Delta National Term Tournament held at Hofstra University in Hempstead, New York, our own homegrown national champions. Yeah, that is why we roar. <laughs> now, to make sure that our state and our entire region begins to realize why we roar, last fall, I made you all a promise. Last fall, I made you all a promise, and I said we are going to start talking about ourselves and the great things we do. And we're going to start a new brand image and marketing campaign to make sure this state hears our roar. Now, many of you have seen the beginning earlier this month of that campaign, but I want to show you how we are telling our story. I want to show you the first few scenes we are sharing about Idaho State University's story. You're going to miss this. What are you talking about? When you go off to that school. That school is Idaho State, man. Top rated college for skiers in the Mountain West. Pow? Pow, pow. Dude, I'm visiting you. <laughs> Going for nuclear engineering, not snowboarding. A nuclear engineering degree with a minor in shredding. <laughs> last one. Everything's the last this year. Last homecoming, 
last football game. But you're going to Idaho State to study... Psychology. Someday, you'll need an appointment to see me. So you still get to do this? For another four years. Go Bengals! Rawr. That the best you got? Rawr. 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 Oh. <laughs> Have you decided yet? Yeah. Man, I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> but I guess if you wanna be a physical therapist, Idaho State's kind of the school, huh? Yeah, I wanna do research and I can do that as an undergrad at ISU. I can even help publish papers. I've got another year left, but let me know how it goes. Do you even have what it takes to be a Bengal? Bengals are fast. And they still let you in? Hey. What's that? It's a cop salad. No, I mean that. Oh, he got accepted into Idaho State. Oh. Says he wants to earn his PhD in engineering. Get that? How long is that gonna last? Let me see. You get your undergrad, you do your master's. No. I mean that. Oh. Go Bengals. Go Bengals. Those are the moments when a student decides they're going to become a Bengal and what it means to them. And when that student chooses Idaho State University, they deserve to know that we are all going to be there for them. Because we are here. Faculty, staff, alumni, we're here for that student. We're here for that one student who didn't even give me her name. But she walked up to me at the student organizational fair in the first week of classes. And she walked up to me and she told me she thought she was about to give up. That she wasn't sure if she was gonna continue her education even though she only had one year left. But she walked up to me and she said she wanted to thank me because she had read my email that I sent out to the students on the first day of classes. In that email I had said this. I said, this is a day where possibilities and dreams begin to converge. This is a day for fresh starts and new intentions. This is the day to step forward into your life, to be brave and resilient, to test the limits of what you think you can do. Today is a day to go boldly towards the future you have always imagined. That was the message in my email to our students. She told me, she said, I read the message, and I read it, and that message gave me what I needed to continue. I'm going to push through and get my degree. She thanked me, and she walked away. So I was standing out on the quad, literally tears welling up in my eyes, trying to compose myself, because something I said had made a real impact on her life. And she was going to use that to complete her education and better her life. That is why we roar. Because our students are here for one another. I know it and I've seen it. I've seen it in our student body president, Logan Schmidt. Now, about a month ago, Logan was walking to class, and he saw a person who was visually impaired having trouble navigating a crosswalk on one of the streets of ground campus. Logan jumped in to help. He took the time to help this person get to their destination, and he did it while no one was looking. He did it because it was the right thing to do. Except, as it turns out, Logan didn't realize that one of our university employees was actually within earshot and heard the conversation. Just by happenstance, happened to be close enough to hear it. And as Logan walked away helping this person, our employee snapped this candid photo. Student leaders like Logan and our students doing the right thing even when they think no one is looking. That is why we roar.
And our students, they're here for our future. Students like Bruce Blair, a first-generation college student, and two weeks ago, Bruce landed a Fulbright scholarship. Yes, our very own Fulbright scholar. He will study nuclear materials repository in Finland. Bruce, Bruce said his mother cried when she heard the news that he got a Fulbright. Bruce is a doctoral student in political science, and he will join a research team for a nine-month appointment in Finland to research the social impacts of nuclear materials repositories because Finland is opening the first such site in the entire world, and we want to know what that means for our society. This is Idaho State University on the national stage because of the actions of our students. That's why we roar. And now I have just one last story to tell. Because I know that sometimes education is just about one kid. And it's that kid from small town Idaho. A fourth generation Idaho native, born and raised here, spent all 12 years in the public school system. That kid who when he was in high school, he asked his mom about getting a job in the lumber mill to maybe make a little bit of money. And his mom said, that it was more important that he focus on his homework and his education. And that in fact, his real job, his real job was to get the grades he needed to get a scholarship because she said to him, you're gonna go to college one day. That kid who ended up being a first generation college graduate, first in his family to get a bachelor's degree. And he got that degree from one of our public state universities here in Idaho. And then he went on to get his graduate degree from one of our other public state universities here in Idaho. And then that kid later spends six years working for the Attorney General, representing the people of the state of Idaho, where he learned phrases like, it's easy to do the right thing when everybody's watching, but the real key is, do you do the right thing when no one is watching? And then after the AG's office, he spent the next 20 years working in Idaho's higher education system, trying to make it better, trying to make a system where all of Idaho's students will have the chance to better their lives through higher education like he did. And then one day, this fourth generation kid from small town Idaho gets named president of Idaho State University. Getting named president of Idaho State University is something that never would have happened if that kid didn't go on and go on to higher education. So yeah, I'm pretty sure what we do in higher education changes lives on an individual level. That kid is living proof. Living proof that what we do here makes a difference. And you know what else I know? I know that kid is not alone. I know, in fact, that kid is represented on our own campus every day by thousands, thousands of other students just like him from small towns all over our state and our region. So we always have to remember why we're here. We always have to be in the mode to help students better their lives. And I'm standing up here today to make a commitment to that mission, a commitment that as president, all of my decisions will be with our why in mind, with our students in mind. Our goals to help our students get an education will be the basis for every decision I make in this position of high trust. And I get to do that every day working side by side with a faculty and staff who have demonstrated that they have a steadfast devotion to the concept and the principles of a student-centric education, where dedication to our students, dedication to our why is our calling. And I know and have observed that I work where a faculty and staff and leaders of this university are answering that call. So, if you are a student, 
and you want an education at a place that understands you, at a place that understands our student-centric mission, that understands our why, that understands why we are here, then you have found your home. You have found your roar. Come join this roar. Roar, Bengals, roar. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and everyone. Uh, please join me and please remain standing while uh, we welcome the Idaho State University Concert Choir conducted by Dr. Scott Anderson to sing the university alma mater. Please be seated. <clears throat> Through his actions and his words, President Satterley has shared his philosophy and vision for us and Idaho State University. Personally and professionally, I have been inspired by his leadership and commitment to our students, our ISU community, and our collective success. It is an honor and a privilege to work with him, learn from him, and to call him my president. Following the ceremony, please join President Satterley at the luncheon, which is located under the tents on the lawn. Our sincere thanks to all who have shared their insights and wisdom this morning as we celebrate the beginning of a new chapter in the history of Idaho State University. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the Investiture Platform Recessional. <laughs> 